Hallelujah. Hello. Let's get started. Uh, we're going to discuss in this session bringing provider networks into OpenStack using L2 gateways. So uh, I am Sukhdev Kapoor from Arista Network. Along with me, we have co-presenters, uh, Armando Maruti and Selva Kumar from HP and Isaku from uh, Intel. So as, a, uh, as an agenda, we're going to uh, talk about the use case, what we, uh, what we took to implement this L2 gateway. Uh, we're going we're gonna to share with you our proposed solution. And then we'll get into a little deep dive as to how this team came about and how we came up with the charter, what we did. And then obviously, uh, we'll, uh, we'll step into the details of the architecture uh, the configuration and the, the, the workflow of the deployment, how would you deploy this uh, L2 gateway, uh, and then the development and the testing of what we have done uh, to make it work. We'll touch on a roadmap, and this is where you have opportunity to tell us what would you like to see uh, going forward uh, to make it work for your uh, deployment scenarios. We'll summarize, and then we'll, of course, uh, cover the Q&A. OK, so essentially, the use case is uh, you have, uh, you have uh, existing data center deployments where you have uh, critical services which are running on you know, physical servers, bare metal host, uh, uh, storage clusters, and whatnot. And, and then you also have OpenStack-based virtual, uh, virtualized environment. Uh, so the things work beautifully within the uh, virtualized environment, but there are, uh, there are needs where you need to connect to, uh, to the bare metal servers or, or, or the clusters to access the file systems or, or to use the existing services which uh, exist in the data center. Right. So, how do you do that? So that's that's the real uh, crux of this uh, L2 gateway. So essentially, it allows you to take a virtual network, which is uh, managed by OpenStack, and and connect it with your existing physical networks or legacy networks. Right. So so that's that's our use case. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, we've used uh, VXLAN. Uh, as uh, the virtual network and connected it with the, uh, the VLAN-based legacy networks. So here is our proposed solution. So come up with, with a gateway. So in this initial implementation, uh, we have uh, used a hardware device, a, a physical switch to implement it. But the way the API is constructed, it's, it's really uh, at an abstract level. Uh, you can build a, a virtual gateway. Uh, we, we, in the initial implementation, we have used VXLAN to VLAN uh, bridging. Uh, in, in future, we will uh, cover more, and we'll, we'll cover that as a part of our roadmap. But that's essentially the use case. So you have a, a bunch of VMs which are running in, in a virtual uh, world, and they need to access the, the, the file systems or, or the services which are running on the bare metal servers. So, so you can create these L2 gateway on any given physical device and, and create the connections and you can achieve the, the connectivity. Okay, so like I said, the L2 gateway as, as an entity uh, is pretty broad. So essentially the goal is to take two different networks, uh, two different L2 broadcast domains and connect them <coughs> together. So those could be any VPN-based networks, VLAN-based networks, MPLS-based networks, what, what, what not. And on the other side, you have a VXLAN-based networks, VLAN-based networks, what not. So, so several attempts have been made in the past to essentially, so everybody recognizes that this functionality is needed, right? But uh, in the past, we've made several attempts to accomplish this 
But then again, when you're trying to solve a bigger problem, you end up, you know, somewhere in the middle or sometime, you know, you don't, you, you don't reach the destination. So in this case, what we did was uh, we decided to divide and conquer. So in Paris summit, some of you were probably involved in these discussions. Maruti presented uh, in Paris summit during lightning talks about this L2 gateway. Bunch of vendors got together. We, we put, we all went into one room. We spent a few hours and we decided that this is something we want. No. So it was not just one person's vision, it was like multiple vendors. Everybody wanted this functionality. So we, we sat down in a room, we spent like a <coughs> couple of hours, we started coming up with an abstract idea as to what we want to accomplish. And, and, and we decided we're going to take a one simple use case and let's build end-to-end -end API for that. We, you know, build an API which is an extensible API. Right, and 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 we 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 looked at ML2 based. We looked at service plugin, so we we chose uh, to use it as a service plugin API because this gives us a lot more flexibility. Okay, and then define a pluggable architecture, you know, which is an agent based where the agents can run on multiple compute nodes. It can be distributed, so therefore, we can deal with the scale issues, right? And to kickstart the project, like I said, we wanted to divide, uh, divide and conquer. So take a, bring down the big scope of the problem into a very small, focused, narrow problem. And we, we said, okay, we're gonna take VXLAN-based networks and, and we're gonna use software VTAP to hardware VTAP integration. So that's what, that's what we will do. And, and in, in, in order to do that, we, we decided we'll use OVSDB uh, hardware VTAP schema. So, so that's, that's our use case. That's the first implementation we decided. So then we went on and, 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 and got into the implementation. And so we're gonna share with you what we have. So now I'm gonna hand over to Armando. He will walk you through uh, the architecture. Okay, thanks Sakdev yeah. for the great introduction. Um, I like this picture sinking a bit at this time of day. Uh, so that uh, you know, you can all make a mental picture of this, and uh, maybe you know, at the end of the at the end of the session, we can go through um, a few questions and answers as to why we went down this uh, uh, this path. Um, I can try and, and give you a few a few hints um, right now. So, um, as you can see, um, we adopted a model where the API itself uh, um, came about via a service plugin. So. As some of you may be aware, um, um, the Neutron um, architecture is, is, is done in a way that it can be plugged in at the several, uh, several, um, at several points in the, you know, in the abstraction layer. Um, as you can see, we have um, core plugins, we have service plugins for providing high level of services. And some may wonder why we went down the path of uh, choosing a service plugin rather than implementing this as, you know, as a core extension uh, via, for instance, like a, a, an ML2 uh, extension, uh, extension mechanism. And the reason was simple. So um, um, we all know how, you know, how fast-paced this project is and uh, how contentious it could be, like uh, doing, doing collaborative code contributions. And we realized that if we wanted to um, experiment and iterate fast and possibly fail fast, we needed to uh, come up with, a, with, a, with, a, you know, with an architecture and a contribution model that let us uh, develop and iterate in isolation. So we went down the, again, the approach of coming up with this, again, layer two gateway, you know, layer two gateway extension as a service plugin that was going to be loosely coupled, integrated uh, with, uh, you know, with, with the rest of the core of Neutron. And um, that's, you know, that, that's primarily, you know, the, the main reason why we went down that path. Um, and as you can see in this picture, we also have uh, on, you know, on, on the right side an L2 gateway agent that is effectively in charge of managing <coughs> the, you know, the, the, the gateway instances, the, one that are, the ones that are in charge of bridging again, the physical layer with the logical layer. And um, this has been an option for our like, initial implementation. It doesn't necessarily need to be, again, the only viable model. And, um, 
in our case, in our specific case, we went down this path also because in, 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 in deployment, you know, deployment models where you have multiple neutron instances you know, behind a load balancer of, you know, for full tolerance and high availability, we wanted to have uh, uh, the ability to interact with, you know, with the gateway instances in a way that we didn't have uh, um, asymmetry. In, in the way those nodes were going to be deployed. And this will be, is going to be clear like later on in, in, in the presentation because um, in order to integrate with the physical world, you obviously need to dispatch certain events to the physical world to again let them know that certain virtual machines have popped up on the, you know, on the logical layer. And you need to consume certain events coming from the physical world in case some bare metal node pops up on, on the network. And in order to coordinate uh, you know, the physical with the logical, you do want to make sure that, again, there is a symmetric published subscribe mechanism in place. Are you guys still with me? Probably not. All right. So this is another, another uh, way to um, represent um, the architecture we went for. We try to capture you know, uh, um, the, the deployment aspects uh, here of, uh, of what we did. And um, um, we uh, um, came up with uh, solutions to support deployments where you could have multiple gateway agents managing gateway instances, again, for high availability and full tolerance. And we um, came up with, with, uh, with solutions to, again, uh, automatically fail over in case, you know, in, case, in case of failures of the agents and so on. And as you can see, you know, it, looks, it looks pretty straightforward. The agents integrate with the rest of the, you know, the server via message bus. And the, the, the integration between the gateway agent uh, nodes and, and the compute nodes where the VMs lie also happens to, to, to a coordination between the service, the server and, 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 and you know, via the message bus. The communication between the, the gateway agents themselves and again the, uh, the gateway instances being, being, being um, uh, instantiated uh, using using on VSDB uh, up and through a VSDB protocol, and there is a, this 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 um, bus here. Uh, it's it's a bidirectional bus. So um, gateway agent nodes establish a connection with the OVSDB instance that manages the gateway agent, uh, and and it also um, it, they're also like subscribe for like for events that come from the OVSDB server again to to understand what's going on in the physical world. Um, in this next slide, effectively, I you know I summarize what I've you know somewhat described here. I let it again uh, stand idle for a few seconds, and now I'm gonna hand over to Maruti, who's gonna walk us through uh, some of the workflows that are uh, that you know will explain how this this works in practice a little you know a little a little in a bit more details. Maruti, thanks, Armando, for uh, handing it to me. So. Uh, let me uh, take you through the typical use cases a user may try while using the L2 gateway. So let's take the first use case where uh, you are starting everything from scratch. You are already planning to use the services on the bare metal servers to be used by your uh, uh, services running on your virtual machines in form of workloads. So what do you do? So the user first creates the network and now he knows that the uh, hardware L2 gateway has to be deployed. So he uh, deploys the hardware L2 gateway. So he creates the uh, abstraction of this hardware L2 gateway into uh, logical gateways. Now you have the, uh, you have the workloads. Uh, you, have, you have to have the workloads. You have just net network. You have just have the logical abstraction of the hardware L2 gateway. Now what you do, you just need to bind this uh, to. So what you do, you just uh, create the connection of this network to this uh, logical abstraction or the log logical gateway. So once the connection is uh, created, it basically it creates the VNI to VLAN binding. Now the, now the time, uh, now it's time to deploy the real workloads in the form of uh, virtual machines. So the user creates the virtual machines and it establishes the connection between the workloads and the services on the bare metal servers. So the second use case, uh, typically the user 
uh, has everything running in place. He has the workloads, work virtual machines and, in a network and it has been being used for a couple of years and now he wants to allow these uh, workloads running on the virtual machines to use the services on the bare metal servers. So what, what does he do? He creates the network, he has the virtual machines on this network, he brings the L2, uh, physical L2 gateway uh, and then he creates the abstraction of this L2 gateway into logical gateways and now it's time to create the binding between the two. So he creates the connection uh, of the network to these logical gateways and that's all. He has the connectivity between the uh, workloads and the services running on the bare metal servers. So let me take you to the workflow how this is all done. So as you can see in the picture, uh, and as Armando already explained, the L2 gateway agent, as we can see in the orange box, it acts as the OSDB client to the OSDB server, either running on the uh, physical L2 gateway itself, or it runs outside the uh, physical L2 gateway. So L2 gateway agent can write into the OSDB server, or it also gets the notifications from the OSDB server if there are any changes uh, in the schema uh, tables on the OSDB server. So the CLI uh, typically, so in my, this use case, what I have shown in green is the tenant VM, uh, the workload already is present. So now he wants to allow this uh, virtual machine to access the services on the bare metal server host as we can see here. Now he executes the uh, the CLI, uh, which specifies the gateway name. So the gateway name is nothing but the name of the logical gateway that is the abstraction of the hardware, hardware L2 gateway. And he specifies the network name. So this is the network to which this virtual machine belongs to. And it wants to allow this workload to access the services on the bare metal server. And we give the default segmentation ID that is nothing but the VLAN ID on the physical network to which the bare metal host belong to. So once this command is given, the L2 gateway service plugin knows the network name. So from the network name, it can get from the Neutron database the VNI ID, that is the VXLAN ID of the network. It knows what are the all the ports that belong to this network. So it builds the list of this uh, and it also knows the uh, VLAN ID that is specified in the command in the form of segment ID, segmentation ID. So it knows the mapping of this uh, VXLAN ID with the VLAN, VLAN ID and also builds the list of MAC addresses and IP addresses of the neutron ports that belong to that network. And this list is then uh, sent to the L2 gateway agent over the rabbit MQ message bus. The L2 gateway agent in turn sends this, uh, inserts this information into the OVSDB uh, table. So I also note that from the ports, we also know the data path VTAP IP of the compu compute nodes and network nodes. So this information is written to OVSDB tables and OV it is uh, the vendor or the, the, uh, the OVSDB then configures uh, the physical hardware L2 gateway to create the VXLAN tunnel to the compute node or network, network node based on the data path IP that was sent by the L2 gateway agent. So this is the VXLAN tunnel that is originated from the physical L2 gateway to the compute node or network node. So let me go to the other uh, part where how we create the VXLAN tunnel from the compute node or network node to the physical L2 gateway. So as we can, as we can see in the diagram, when a new bare metal, uh, so now, uh, as I said earlier uh, in the previous slide, we have already written the VNI to VLAN binding into the OVSDB server table. So the, now the switch already knows, or the L2 gateway already knows this network is bound to this physical VLAN. So now when a bare metal host is detected uh, by the L2 gateway and that is connected to the VLAN which is already there in the binding, now the L2 gateway's responsibility is to advertise this MAC and IP address 
to the other side, to the virtual side. So what it does is, it sends this information or it writes that information into the OVSDB tables, basically the IP address, the MAC address of the bare metal host, and its own VTAP IP, the L2 gateways, hardware VTAP IP, all this information is written into OVSDB server. And as we, say, as we already discussed that L2 gateway agent acts as an OVSDB client to the OVSDB server, it gets the notification. In that notification, we know that the VTAP IP of the gateway, we know the MAC address and the IP address of the bare metal host. So L2 gateway agent in, in turn takes this and write, uh, sends a reverse rabbit MQ message RPC to the L2 gateway service plugin. The L2 gateway service, service plugin writes this information into the neutron DB. And what we do is, as we already know, the L2 agent has a uh, L2 population mechanism so which, by which we can uh, take the max and create the, uh, we can create the tunnels. So we have leveraged the same thing. So L2 gateway service plugin, it sends uh, L2 population uh, RPC, uh, RPCs to the L2 agent and L2 agent creates the VSLAN tunnel from the compute node or uh, network node to the physical L2 gateway. So because we already know the VTAP IP of the L2 gateway, we, we could, uh, we could uh, leverage these RPCs of L2 population. So I'll hand over to Selva to continue further on that. So thanks, Maruti. So I am Selva Kumar. I am from HP. So now, now I am going to talk about the L2 gateway development, testing, and the future roadmap that we are going to work on. So the entire L2 gateway code we have implemented in the Stackforge repo that is available in github.com slash stackforge slash networking hyphen L2 gateway. So, and we have also leveraged this public API in the form of service plugin. So, we have implemented uh, two, uh, two extension API as Armando already told. So, one is uh, that L2, L2 gateway extension API uh, for representing the logical gateway and the other one is L2 gateway connection to connect that logical gateway to the L2, uh, L2 networks. Uh, and we have a third party CI that is HP networking CI. Uh, that is that does continuous integration for us. So it is based on a single node uh, dev stack setup. So whenever if you do uh, code check in in the Stackforge repo, so the build automatically will get generated uh, this and also it does uh, Tempest API testing and some integration testing uh, of, of for L2 gateway. So and also we have uh, standalone uh, CLI that is as part of that uh, Stackforge repo. Uh, that uh, we have to integrate with that Neutron CLI. So it means after integrating with the Neutron CLI, if you download the Python Neutron client package, so we can create this L2 gateway and L2 gateway connection as like uh, core uh, Neutron create network subnet or port. And off late uh, in the Kilo release, we have transitioned this L2 gateway project into the Neutron. So it means the Neutron embraces our L2 gateway. So whenever uh, official uh, Neutron releases, our L2 gateway code also it releases. So the, we can also download the tarball in this link. Uh, there is a dev stack uh, setup available. So the uh, readme that uses that RST doc is available. So you can download the code and you can try uh, this code and test. So currently we are doing this active development. Uh, there is, we have bi-weekly IRC meeting at every Monday. Uh, so where we discuss about the current uh, uh, defects on L2 gateway. So we are also, defect, uh, we are also tracking this defect in the uh, launch pad. So uh, launchpad.net slash networking hyphen L2 gateway. So there are some few defects uh, available. So you are working on it. So, so coming to the testing, uh, we have uh, tested this L2 gateway solution uh, in the uh, 5930, HP 5930 switches, as well as uh, Arista's 7000 series uh, switches. So we have a recorded demo uh, available in the YouTube site. So bo for both the switches, uh, uh, we have that native OVSDB server runs, uh, instances running, which embraces the hardware VTAP schema. So this uh, L2 gateway, that the kilo based code is tested, successfully tested, and the, we have achieved the end-to-end -end, uh, functionality. So what's next? So these are all the future roadmap. Uh, so currently, in the overlay side, that is on the neutron side, uh, we have supported only the VXLAN type. So we have to support for other tunneling scheme like NVGRE or uh, the TMPLS. So on the physical side, uh, the legacy side, we have supported only the VLAN type. Uh, so, uh, so current base is a hardware based implementation. So uh, software based we have to implement. So where entire hardware functionality we are bringing into the uh, x86 physical server, either in the compute node or any other service node. 
So current implementation is based on only the CVR. So DVR we have not supported due to the technical depth. Uh, you also tell us what you want to improve uh, so that it will be useful for us to continue. So now I am going to give it to Subdev where he can summarize the overall L2 gateway project. Thanks. So, so the key is the last bullet here. right? So like I said at the beginning, that we took a very simple use case. We wanted to concentrate and we wanted to get it done. And it's a really a commendable effort by the, by the team here in one release cycle from beginning to end, the whole thing is implemented. Last week we released it, we put it on the Python package index. Like, uh, like Selva said, you can pull it down and you can actually start to play with it. The API is there, the whole implementation is there. You can do it through DevStack, you can do it through uh, your regular uh, Python package. So, uh, so tell us uh, what do you need, uh, uh, what, what should be the next uh, uh, features you would like to see. We are here to help. Doesn't necessarily mean that we'll build them, but yes, <laughs> or come join us. Actually, that's that because this is a joint effort. It's not like one person's uh, charter, really, right? So let me <coughs> summarize uh, what we are saying. So L2 uh, Gateway really helps in in bridging uh, the VXLAN and VLAN based networks. So in this case, VLAN being the physical networks and VXLAN being the virtual networks, right? So L2 Gateway is part of Killer Release. The, the, uh, the northbound APIs uh, to manage, the, uh, manage and create the logical gateways and connections and, and so forth, it's available. And when you create a connection, it does create a, a VXLAN tunnel. So it, it essentially uh, what, we're, what we're doing is taking a software VTAP and hardware VTAP and creating a tunnel between the two to achieve the, the connectivity between two distinct uh, networks. And uh, uh, like Salva said, so in the initial cut, we wanted to divide and conquer. We wanted to have it, you know, really reduce down the, uh, the workload. So we're using only hardware VTAP schema. So again, the API, the way it is developed, uh, you, you can gut out the back end if you don't like OBSDB plug in something else, you want to uh, make it work for your environment, uh, it, it'll work. And uh, we have uh, tested it uh, uh, both on HP and Arista uh, Tor switches, and it's actually being demoed. Uh, <coughs> if, if you stop by at Arista booth or, or HP booth, uh, you can see it actually in action. Or uh, we provided you the links. Uh, you can pull it down and uh, and play with it. Uh, now I'm gonna dive into a Q&A. Yeah, one, okay. one key point I wanted to stress here is that obviously, you know, the, the backbone of this is a VSDB and a VDEP schema. So we, have, we, we did this work uh, using, you know, hardware and hardware switches because our employers are so kind to give us and the, the hardware, but you know, nothing, nothing should really stop us to um, get this to, to, to run on, 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 on virtual machines or uh, like white box switching. I mean, in the, the gap that needs to be filled is really small, and this is what we really would like the community interest, you know, um, help to, to, to you know, close this gap. Because ultimately, we'd want uh, you know, to, to, to minimize the, the, the barrier of entry to, you know, to get him to use this, uh, this solution. <coughs> Because now, essentially, we have done the heavy lifting. So the API is there. So come in and, and start using it. And start, you know, come and join us, participate. So every, every other Monday, uh, the team meets on IRC uh, OpenStack meeting four. Uh, come and uh, uh, join us. Share your uh, feedback. Share your use cases. And, and participate in it and take it to the next level. How to install, uh, you can do it through DevStack, you can just uh, pull it in uh, directly from the Python package index. There is a wiki, it has a elaborate detail, uh, you can go check that out. There's a Git repository uh, for you to uh, pull the code and play with it. So with that, uh, yeah, so now we're gonna, uh, we're gonna open it up for for questions, if you don't mind stepping to the uh, microphone. Yeah, you either go to the mic or we'll try to relay the question. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, it's very interesting because I did very similar thing for a different application. So when you connect uh, the external network, uh, you need to have an internal network identical to that, correct? Because that's how a tunnel is created. A tunnel is created from the same network on a different host. Yes, when you uh, when you are connecting the two networks, right? Uh, so there's a yeah. tenant network, and then there's a physical network. Physical network, uh, like he showed in the CLI, you specify the VLAN ID. Right? Yes. So and, and internally, when you connect to the network, mm -hmm. so it, it, to whatever that uh, VNI mapping is, it will uh, it will it will take that from the new. So you don't have to specify that. On the on the uh, virtual side, don't you have to create a network? like a proxy network? Are mm -hmm. you tunneling from some arbitrary network to the physical network? It has to be between one network to other network. No, you, you're a regular neutron network. So you, you, you create a neutron network, yes. and you're, you're launching VMs, and you, you say, say you call a blue network. So you have a couple of VMs yeah. hanging off there. So you say, take this blue network, mm -hmm. create me a gateway, and connect this blue network to VLAN number five. That's it. That's all you need to specify. Everything else is done automatically for you. So if I understood your question correctly, and obviously we can take this offline if I haven't, the networks needs to be known to your deployment. So on one end you have a you know, neutral network ID. On the other end you you know may you need in this specific instance like a segmentation ID, you know a VLAN ID that that's uh, that's accessible from your switch. And um, yeah, in theory well, you know you should. Because what happens is uh, logically if you see. On the virtual side, you have network N1. Mm -hmm. Let us say it has 10.1.1.1, .1 .1 .1, uh, uh, 1.0. And on the other side is, uh, you know, 172, 168, something, something. Mm -hmm. So you are actually bridging these two. Well, we're bridging them at the layer two level. level. So well, you, again, we represent, you know, we're bridging uh, you know, them you have to, to being be, acting as a single broadcast domain. Yes, OK? Unless uh, these both are the same uh, segment, it, is, it has to go through an L3. That, right, I mean, and uh, you, you want to answer this question? Yeah, yeah. right. Have, Even if you wanted to put the gate between the lower and the end for your first, it would work with this too. Because yes. So, yeah, there is, there is no routing involved. I mean, the, the, yeah. the address space must be the same. Yeah, we okay. have tested this. Uh, we have created a router on the network node and we have tested it. It, it works. Yeah, you need a router, that's what I'm coming to say. Uh, yeah, so, so when, when you're going for two different address spaces, yes, correct. of course. So but you, but if, if when you're, when you're, what we're saying is when you're taking two, you're extending your layer two domain. Mm -hmm. So in this case, so you have two use cases. When you're going across a different IP space, then you're going to need a route in, right. in between. But if you're going to the same, uh, uh, you're extending your same IP space okay. from, from your legacy networks into your virtual networks, then okay. you don't. So I mean, in 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 in, the, in this case here, actually, it's like this bare metal is gonna have an IP on the same subnet that these VMs are gonna you okay. know are gonna have. Obviously, the game, you know the use case that you described it, it's feasible, right. uh, but it's not quite what you know obviously we, yeah. we built here. And but it, it still it still works. I mean, you can still in, in theory if this used to be um, uh, happens to be on a different subnet, right. and you have a router lying somewhere, then you can still route from. Like I all the way through be, another 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 uh, that network. Should be, that should be the default scheme, I think, because the external network is always going to be on a different subnet. You can't assume that. I, I'd say let's take this offline. Okay. This, you know, is a, this is a, this is good 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 feedback. Yeah. Yes. Just want to confirm the uh, layer two gateway agent runs on each hypervisor. Is that correct? None, none necessarily. Um, you may uh, if you if you want, or you can run them on on, on standalone. Um, you know, uh, special purpose nodes, and they can be, for instance, like the network nodes. Uh, you can run a single of them, you can run more than once for, you know, for high availability uh, or false tolerance. Uh, uh, but yeah, they, they do not need to uh, run on the compute nodes. Oh, okay. in, in fact, uh, you can run the L2K2 agent on the controller itself, you can run it on the compute node, or you can run on the network node. Got it. So, because yeah. it doesn't uh, use any bridges or tunnels underneath, it just uh, uses OSDB protocol to the OSDB server. Sure, yeah, just want to confirm. Yeah. What do you do? Uh, is it drawing in the uh, network So if I understood your question correctly, you're asking whether we do any validation or like policy enforcement? 
as to whether like a specific uh, user can ac access a specific set of VLANs. Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting point. I don't think we, we have looked into that in this, in this like, iteration. But I mean, this has come up uh, like in the discussion, and we'll definitely be looking at that because it sounds like you know a genuine thing that you want to do. <laughs> yeah, right now we have uh, allowed only the admin operator to right. create the connection yeah. for safety, and uh, in next iteration we'll look into that. So yeah, again, it's not the general tenant that uh, can act effectively to create the gateway connection. It's the admin that needs to cooperate with the user, you know, with the, with the user. So, um, so I have a question. How do you envision extending your architecture and your, um, you know, your solution where your physical side is a layer to VPN? So it's more like MPLS layer to VPN or, or BGP eVPN. However, your, your logical side could be, you know, say VLAN or any other type of neutron network. So, some, uh, so let, let, me, let me take Absolutely, that. Absolutely, go okay. for it. So, uh, so there was a, uh, one vendor, uh, they were essentially trying to do exactly that, that taking, the, taking the VPN based networks and they wanted to bring it into the virtual network. So the way they were looking at was that bring the VPN network into their device and then bring an L, uh, VLAN on the other side and take that VLAN and connect using this L2 gateway. So I guess there were happened to be us actually. So I'm, we have <laughs> <laughs> actually. Okay. So, so <laughs> actually, uh, you may be another one. The vendor which I am thinking about is a different vendor. Sure. But so now we have two vendors. Two vendors. So okay. who, are, who, who are looking for that 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 solution? So right. I, I think if you will, we won't overlook like the technical details a, a bit. I. I personally think that from a logical standpoint, so long as your gateway, as we modeled here, has two leg, legs, one, you know, one leg on the virtual side and one leg on, one leg on the physical side, whichever it may be, and is capable of doing the bridging, then we should be good. We just need to bring, basically, we just need to bring in that driver that knows how to do the bridging between, you know, whichever you have on the physical side and the virtual side. So, obviously, if you're interested in the type of use case, we'd love to work with you. Sure, sure. We'd sure. love to see you do the work, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah that's, I, I think that from a logical standpoint, it, you know, the API allows for that type of mapping. Sure. Do, do, do you see this thing that the segmentation ID could be, you know, perhaps we over it into to address that? Well, I haven't seen like um, a specific customer request yet. I mean, obviously, this is the first time that this solution has come to the limelight. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see going forward whether you know this this type of requirement pops up. And uh, you know we'd love to like work with other folks and then you know take this to to be you know catching a broader set of requirements. Sure. I, I I don't have enough like exposure to customers unfortunately um, to to understanding at this point in time whether you know this is this is going to be a likely uh, requirement. Sure. But it I sounds think, like you know this is something that obviously you've been thinking about for right. quite some time. So yes. I suspect that even in Paris, I mean, that's why you were, you were you're a stubborn it. guy. So, so <laughs> uh, Mohammed, yeah. this is the this is the IRC. Uh, June sure. 8th is our next meeting. Please come join us. Let's sure. discuss. Yeah, this. I think there are, there are definitely some you know um, yes. we intersect at different yeah. points yeah. and so forth. Right? Cool. And then I I you know Maruti had mentioned that basically he alluded to some MPLS side of the things and I'm interested in really knowing, you know, what more can be done there. So thank okay. you. Yeah. We're good. Uh, another quick question. So do you guys have any recommendation for how to handle bump traffic in this solution? So uh, so right now uh, what, what happens is when uh, when the virtual machine Macs are written to the OVSDB server, the OVSDB server itself sends a notification that, you know, uh, uh, the the uh, Macs are written. So now we know that the Macs are there already. So what we do, we create a tunnel. So what happens is, uh, and uh, uh, so bump traffic in the sense, f so right now what happens is the first packet that is sent from the virtual machines gets broadcasted uh, over the tunnels. But because we get the response from the uh, bare metal Macs, we uh, second packet will not get broadcasted. I think you're talking about ARP, right? I'm, I'm saying other kind of multicast traffic if I want to do where you cannot do a proper Mac, unique Mac learning. How do you handle that? I mean, you need to have some service node or something, typically. So do you mind if at this yeah. time we sure, take yeah, this yeah, offline? Sure. Yes. So can you go back a picture? Inside the data model, I'm looking at it, it has interfaces for the gateway. Are those gateways 
are those interfaces on the gateways enumerated when the gateway registers with OVSDB? So is it expecting to see an enumeration of interfaces for the OVSDB VTEP schema? And that's what populates the, the data in the Neutron database. Uh, so, so there's a, in the schema, it talks about L2 gateway interfaces. I can ask this offline. I was just wondering if the L2 gateway is expected to register interfaces with the OVSDB VTEP schema, and that's how these are populated. Yes. So what happens is when, uh, when you discover uh, your uh, L2 gateway, it's the responsibility of uh, basically gateway side to uh, write the information into the OVSDB, basically the physical interface and the physical switch. So this physical switch and the physical interface gets replicated into Neutron database. And then when you create the, your logical gateway, we try to validate whether this really exists or not. So you know, every time you create a gateway and then you create a connection between the gateway and the network, that's where like, that, that data gets. So the interfaces actually come from the registration of OVSDB enumerating the interfaces. Yeah. Yes. Replicated yes. I think we're about time, so we need to hand over to the next session. But let's walk outside and continue the discussion if you guys are interested. Yeah, I and think, thanks I again. Think, uh, I have a use case which is very similar, so probably I'd like cool. to take yeah. the discussion yeah, further. But I need to hand over the, you know. Yeah. Thank you, by the way.